So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole's like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I think that's uh, uh, We're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, listeners. We are back. Yay. It's Angela. It's Bradford. Yes, with By the By. Thanks for joining us for another week. Yes. Yeah, we are, I'm going to say, freshly back from Desire, although don't necessarily feel so fresh. I know, I feel shagged out after a long squawk. <laughs> well, there was plenty of shagging. Yes. And some squawking. So, squawking, you know. <laughs> yes. It's good. It works. Um, and we promise to get you all the awesomely devilishly detailed uh desire stories yes um but not this week no no (laughs) this Uh, week we are going to replay an old episode it was the one on the five love languages yes because it's something that we think is really interesting important and it actually came up a few times at desire yes uh one of my favorite t-shirts i saw was my love language is panic which is not one of the five. Which but. is not one of the five, but I sort of saw that and I was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, this is something that we both believe very uh, very intently on. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a good way to understand how you communicate with your partner. So, we're taking you back in the Wayback Machine. Um, if you're listening to this as it's released, our next Pendulum Party is the 22nd. Yes. So, not this coming Friday, but the next so very soon. excited about that we've got a lot of work coming up to do for that um if you're a patreon listener you will get your discount code coming up uh this week uh probably the today or tomorrow yep uh so yeah Ooh, so much to do so I much know, to do i know it's exciting and christmas is right around the corner yeah so uh yeah all any, right any final thoughts there on this no just yeah. sit back Listen, enjoy, and if you have heard about the five love languages before, well, you get to hear about them again. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt to have a reminder. No, this is something that you we all need reminders on, so yeah. take a listen. So tonight we're going to talk about the five languages of love. The languages of love. And I will start off by saying that I read the book, I think it's called The Five Love Languages or something. Yep, the Five Love Languages. Yeah, so I read the this... The Secret to Love That Lasts. There you go. So I read this book probably in 2006. One of my colleagues gave it to me. It was um, written in 1995, for those who are interested, by Gary Chapman. Yes, so it's been out for quite a while. Um, but one of my colleagues had read it and thought it was really interesting, so she gave it to me and I read it. Um, and it is very interesting. It is... I mean, Mr. Adams is going to rant about this later, I'm sure. I don't rant about anything. But it's a, it's got a, it's a Christian base. It's a Christian guy who wrote it. If you read the book or listen to it on Audible or whatever, it's very heavy on the Christian base. But if you are into that, awesome. If you're not, that's fine. Just ignore it. Listen to the principle of it or read the principle. Look at what's behind that and, and focus on that. Because it really is very intriguing and... I found it interesting, at the time that I read it, I was finishing my second marriage and, <laughs> <laughs> and going into singlehood. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's... Maybe it was the first marriage. I might have, I'm trying to think of when that was. I think it was finishing the first one and going into singlehood. And it was interesting because I could then look back at my first marriage and see, more specifically, things that I could have done better. Yes. Um, but we'll get to that as well. But it's it's really in- interesting, and you can use it, your relationship with your primary partner. I've used it, relationships with people at work, all different places, and we'll talk about that. Um, but we should probably start with what they are. Yes. Um, I'll touch as well just to say that for me, I don't think this is just about love. No. I think these are languages, relationship relationships. Relationships, yeah. So you can apply this to your friends. You can yep. apply this to your family. I know, you know, again, in the book, one children, of the things they talk about is children, how to talk yeah. to your children. Um, and so I'm not going to rant about the whole Christian side. Look, 
I, I was raised Christian. I'm not anti-Christian. I just don't like it to be shoved down my throat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just looking at the cover of this book, you sort of get, you already get that feel because it's that typical, it's got the big title and it's got the stock photo of two people yeah. in the sunset hugging. I mean, it's it's totally kind of, I'll say that, that kitsch that you often get with yeah. self-help right. books. Um, so that was the first thing for me that was like, eh, but... Focus on the principles. I focus on the principles, yeah. and the principles are solid. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's. It, I, I appreciate this, and I like this, or we wouldn't be podcasting about it. All right. All right. Do you want to go through? Or do you want me to go through? Um, you go through. All right. Uh, I've got some stuff. So but... the first language is words of affirmation. So, as you can probably tell from the the phrase, it's verbal compliments, um, words of appreciation. You know, when you tell somebody that you look really great in that or, you know, I like the, you, you're really funny, you make me laugh a lot, um, things like that. So when you're basically telling someone how good they are at something they do or how they look, that type of thing. So basically just telling someone and, and verbally telling them and acknowledging what is positive about them. Right. Saying the words, I love you, yeah. um, you know, I, in a, I'm going to use my parents in this. Um, when I was a kid, the last thing my mom always said to me before I went to bed was, good night, I love you, sweet dreams. Mm-hmm. And it was always in that cadence, in that order, you know, good night, I love you, sweet dreams. You know, and so I know now that that was one of the ways that she was sh- showing, you know, her language of love to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find now that I'll say the same thing to you because that was said to me for so long that, you know, that's right. sort of... That those words of affirmation of of thank you, you know, I love you, I appreciate you, things like that. You look good. You look, you know, sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Next. Number two. <laughs> number two is acts of service. So this is doing something that you know the other person would want you to do. It can be cooking, it can be emptying the dishwasher, it can be putting the laundry away, working on the car, keeping it, maybe not working on the car, but keeping it running, taking it to the mechanic even. Picking up, filling up the gas tank before you go home, knowing that your partner's going to use it tomorrow. Yeah. That's a, that's actually a really big one that a lot of people get wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so what's funny is I see little things like that. That's a, that's a big one. So, you know, you get in the car on, on Monday morning Mm -hmm. to go to work and your partner's left it on E. Mm -hmm. So that those little acts of service or um, small things like putting the your if your partner's in the shower you put their towel in the dryer right. get it nice and warm so that when they come out of the out of the shower they've got a nice warm towel to wrap themselves in yep. these are the little things like this that so when when I first heard acts of service I was like ooh blowjobs <laughs> <laughs> well, and particularly, you know, if you know that your partner has had a really long week at work or is really tired, and even if you don't feel like doing something and you do it anyway, just because you know that they'll appreciate it, yeah. that's another... You know they're tired. Yeah. You're trying to help them out. It's yeah. like the old adage, actions speak louder than words. Absolutely. And yeah. for some people, that's very true. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, that, that's another, it's, there's a lot of little things that you can do. They don't have to be big yeah. acts of service. They can be small acts of service. Putting your shoes away. Yeah. You know? Putting the kids to bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess that's a bigger one, but well, yeah. cause yeah. we have lots of friends that they'll sort of take turns, mm-hmm. you know, bathing the children and putting them to bed, um, while the other one sits on the couch and has a glass of wine. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Picking up the shoes or, yeah. It can be little things. It doesn't have to be something yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the third one is receiving gifts. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, but it doesn't have to always be physical gifts. You know, some people, it's like a big kind of huge present. Some people, it's just a little something. Your partner goes away on business or travels somewhere, and they bring you a little something back. You know, whether it be a magnet or a shot glass or a whatever, something small, piece of jewelry, uh, which isn't always small, but... Um, but yeah, so some people, you know, a gift is in receiving something tells them that, that their partner or someone else, whoever the person is that you're talking about really means something to them. Yeah. And, and that's that you're thinking about them yes. out when you're, when, when you're, you're away together. from them. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, it could be small things like, like the, 
it's I remember one time when I was in high school, I gave a girl something that I won out of a, a one of those plush machines. Yeah, yeah. So you, a teddy bear. So that was small. It cost me like two fifty. Um, but at the time, you know, it was something that I could give her. That like, look, I was thinking about yeah. you. Um, and now we try to give each other things like vacations and cruises. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it doesn't have, at least it doesn't have to be big. Um, but it's just, you know, something visible, something tangible yeah. to say that when I'm not with you, I still think about You're you. You're still in my mind. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, so the third one is quality time. Wasn't that the third one? Fourth one. Sorry. I cannot count. Sorry, people. <laughs> Apparently, I need to pull out my fingers and toes. <laughs> yeah, this is like me growing up again. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so the next one. How about let's go with that? The next one. That's <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Uh, so number four is quality time. And that is... I'm not going to... It's it's hard in today's society. I think when the book was originally written, it was, you know, undivided attention is right. what was intended. But that is so hard in today's society. It is, but I've, I mean, there's a we've seen people fail at this, and if anybody yes. who's ever gone to a restaurant has seen people fail at this, for like for us, if we're, if I'm going to give you quality undivided attention time, that means my phone is in my pocket, yeah. my phone is in my jacket, my phone is not on the table, and it's right. definitely not on in my hands. Right. Um, and it can be as simple as, you know, sitting down and having dinner together and, and just talking about what's going on yeah. or just you don't even having have to dinner talk. at the dinner table just, rather than having it in front of the yeah, TV. Just being together. It can be, you know, going out for a walk. It can yep. be, you know, whether you go on a, a big vacation or you go to a different place than you normally do or you just, you know, you play a game together. Just yeah. do something just to actually spend time together and communicate and and. Get, I'm going to say get to know each other, but appreciate who each other is more so. Well, you know, it does. I, I look at it, it doesn't have to always be like communicative time. We don't no. have to be talking. So, no. like when you and I are snuggling on the couch watching Archer, that's quality time. Or on Sunday mornings when we're sitting out on the balcony reading. Reading. I mean, yeah. we're not talking to each other, yeah. but we're both sort of sharing that same space, um, and and we're together. Yeah. And it's there's no real communication at all. It's just. Reading and it's the fact that if I put my book down and look up, you're there. Yeah, that's that's quality time for me. Yep. So we go to number five. Sure. The next one. <laughs> the last. The one. last one is <laughs> physical touch. And this one, to me, I think encompasses a lot of things. It's it can be physical touch, like holding hands, hugging. Um, those types of things with children, you know, if you're looking at babies, babies that are held, if you, if you stroke them, you know, when you're touching children, um, giving a child a hug or putting your hand on their shoulder, you know, even just those little touches. And then with your partner, of course, you've got hugging, kissing, um, you know, intimate. I would say everything but sex. Yeah. Really. Right. Um, yeah, holding hands in public, yeah. you know, just any kind of, or even just in passing. Like, I know when Mr. Adam is cooking, I'll come up behind him and I'll just put my hands around his waist or, you know, just kind of touch him. If I'm passing yeah. him in the kitchen, I'll just kind of brush him and just, you know, a little pat on the back or something. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and again, once again, to use my parents as an analogy, just to show that this isn't necessarily a sexual thing, no. um, that my mom, my mom and dad were separate when it comes to the languages of love. Mm -hmm. I know that they both spoke different languages, which we'll talk a bit in a moment. But um, for my dad, touch was really important. And for my mom, it wasn't important. And she recognized that it wasn't important to her. And so she saw that as a, a lack, the, something she was lacking in. So she hugged me and was constantly in touch with me, being, you know, positive affirmations of, you know, hand on my back, good job, you know, um, we held hands a lot when I was, I was young, you know, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. She'd always wanted to be holding my hand because she wanted to know that there was that physical co contact, um, but always hugging, um, which I think sort of, I look back now knowing, having taken the test and knowing where I am, mm -hmm. um, that's where I came from. I look at where, you know, we often learn how to love from the people we grow up around. And for me, it was my mom and dad. Um, who are still amazingly married after a billion years. Um, and that's, you know, I see how they loved each other, and I see that there's a lot of that in me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll, there's, there's a lot of um, 
questions, and, and we'll link to the, the questionnaire from the Five Languages uh, website. They actually do an online questionnaire that you can take. You know, it's you, a brief 30 question. Yeah. It it's, goes quickly. Yeah, it's yeah. not long at all. Yeah. Like she said, 30 questions, and it automatically tallies it for you. But I, I just wanted to read out a couple of the questions, sort of get folks kind of an idea yeah, of sure. what kind of questions are asked. Um, so all of these questions start, it's more meaningful, it's more meaningful to me when. Um, and in one case, my partner unexpectedly does something for me, like filling my car or doing the laundry. Or... My partner and I touch. So you would say, which one is more important to you? Uh, or which one is more meaningful to you? Mm -hmm. um, and then another one is, it's more meaningful to me when either my I get the chance to just hang out with my partner or I unexpectedly get small gifts from my partner. And you can sort of see where this is going based on what uh, Mrs. Adam went through the whole, the whole list. Um, and then some of the other examples are, I read a loving note slash text slash email for no special reason from my loved one or my partner and I hug. And so there's a lot of those kind of questions. And you'll go through the whole thing, and then it tallies it up for you, and you get a score of, you know, what does your love language profile look like? Mm -hmm. Do Do you want to guess what mine looks shall, like? Shall we go through? So... So, right. spoiler alert, I took this test, of course, back in 2006 or seven, whenever I first read the book. And I took this test 20 minutes ago. Right. Uh, and 40 well, minutes ago. I also took it again, <laughs> to, and I was curious to see if it had changed at all. I guess the first question is, has it changed? No. All right. So, I, I think the way we, I want to do this is, so we've got the five levels. Yes. Um, First, we'll, you'll guess what my, so this is also out of 12, so it's each, uh, each level or, or each uh, score mm -hmm. could be out of 12 okay. total possible. Sure. Um, the first thing you have to do is guess what is my language of love that's first, yep. and then what number out of 12 do you think I got? Okay. So do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I'm going to guess that your top one is touch. Physical touch. That's correct. It is physical touch, and I'm going to guess that your top one is physical touch. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Um, and out of 12, what did I score? I'm going to say 12. I'm going to say 11 for you. What? I had 12. You had 12? I had 10. Oh. Oh. Dang. Snap. It is my primary level. I know you're, she's, she's actually math, writing yeah. notes now. Yeah. Like no, I'm going to do math so I can keep up with this. Oh. All right. Continue on. Um, oh, I guess if you add them all up, they will equal mm -hmm. 30, mm -hmm. won't they? Yes, they will. Math. It works, bitches. I'll at least get the last one right. So, <laughs> so our both of us are physical touch people. I mean, there's Very no heavily. question about it. For we, me, that comes out to be 40% touch. You would probably be about 30%. Yeah. Yeah. 30%. So... 33, I guess. It is it is very important to me. And I thought yeah. it was more important than it was, but apparently it's not. But it is very important to me. We are in constant contact. Like you said, anytime we're out walking, we're holding hands. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll be sitting on the train, holding hands, arm around each other. We, we're having public displays of affection. Yeah, it's... I, and I and even sometimes if we're sitting across from each other, like I'll link my legs around your ankles yeah. or, you know, yeah, something like that. So, yeah. Or you'll put your hand on the table and I'll put my hand in yours. Or, yeah, that's yeah. definitely how how for us it is in constant communication. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So the next one for you, I think, is going to be tough. For, for you, I think it's acts of service. No. Damn, it's quality time. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> All right, and what's mine? Uh, yours, I would say, is quality time as it well. Is quality time? Yeah. Okay, so your number, I'm going to say then is eight. Yes. Woo! <laughs> Sorry, I, if I blew out your ears. I'm going to go with nine for you. Damn, you got it spot on. I love it. Uh, I had the so, wrong oh, man. People keeping yes. points at, at home. You're yeah. winning. Yeah. 
All so, right. So I and for me that that's those are my two highest by far. And well, yeah, we, you're 20, so that's two thirds of your acts. Your is, love is communication is touch and quality time. Touch and and time. I think that's obvious to anybody who does know us is that we're very often together. We're yeah. very often touchy. Yeah. I um, mean, we we're taking a pole dancing class together. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, if you hadn't listened to this, I mean, it's like hello, spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't surprise you. Yeah. And you know, we do. We have things that are separate that we do, but at the same time. I'm, I very much enjoy things more if we're together. Yeah, and it's me too. Yeah. And it's so part of me feels like that might be unhealthy because I look at my previous relationship and we sort of had that same, we were always together yeah. and people didn't know us apart. Yeah. Um, but for me, how I think this one is different, this one being this relationship is different, is that we still have a, a unique identity. We're right. not just us, we're. Mm-hmm. we're so much more than that. And I think a lot of people do recognize us, recognize us as so much more than that. Yeah. But I think most people expect us. We're a package deal. Yeah. 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 Okay. Number so then, three. That means your third one, it has to be acts of service. It is. Okay. It is. Um, and if I'm going to say it's five, six. Ooh, damn. All right. So for you, acts of service, I would say is the next one as well. It is. Yeah. So I'm trying to come up with a number here. Um, five. <laughs> You're good. Yes. Five. Awesome. <sighs> so, so I figured it's funny because I, it, I'm. This test is how it tests us. Yes. And how we show acts of love. Yes. Um, not necessarily how we receive acts of love, which is the only negative I see to this. Because sometimes you might be better at doing things for people than having things done for you. Right. And that's sort of how I see you. You're much better at doing things for me than you are having things done for you. Right. Um, so, for instance, like, I look at acts of service and receiving a gift. If, I, if you're cold and we're outside somewhere and I take my jacket off, you're angry at me. Because you think... It's my jacket. I think you're going to get cold, and I don't want you to be cold just so that I'm not cold. Yes. Whereas for me, I look at it the other way. I, part of that is me. It's an act of service. I want. I don't. I will be happily cold in order for you not to be cold. And do you see how? But it, I would rather be cold, so you're not cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah, but it's circular. It is circular, yeah. but I feel like. And I'd never play this. I never play this card. But I'm the man, and I get to play the man card. And, like, the genteel <laughs> thing to do, the courtly love, the gentlemanly uh, thing yeah. to do, is to give the lady your j- jacket. That's and I true. still remember our, like, third date. We had hooked up once, maybe twice. No, we'd hooked up once, because it was that following Sunday that you and I went to see War Horse yes. in the States. Yep. And it was a cold, it happened to be a cold October day. Yeah. Um, September, October, I don't know. It was an oddly cool October. day. And uh, we were leaving the show, and I had a leather jacket on, and you were chilly, and mm-hmm. I took the jacket off, and I sort of just draped it over your shoulders. I did that without even thinking, because... Again, that's how I was raised. That's what you do with a lady. And you gave me this look like I was from Mars. And you're like, <laughs> you're, but you didn't say anything. You were a lady enough not to say anything. But you looked at me like I was mad. And then we had some of the best sex that I remember um, ever having at that point that night. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to give her my jacket every single time. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I still, that's, that stuff like for me, like carrying the groceries home, mm-hmm. we often fight about this. I but fight, air quotes fight. We, we <laughs> argue about this. It's hard for me to give that up, especially things like carrying the groceries. You know, I don't want you to carry all the groceries when I can help because I don't, it's that independence thing for me. It's yeah, like, I, I want to do, I want to help too. I yeah. want to be useful. I don't want to be just like, you know, some you're not Mousy a Stepford woman wife, walking behind you. But you're not a Stepford <laughs> wife. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, but you can still be, I, I mean, you're still useful and important. Dude, if it wasn't for you, I would only be wearing dirty clothes. I would I would take my underwear and, and put them inside out and, and then rotate them 90 degrees. You know, I, mm-hmm. that's what would happen. If, <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I would only buy new socks. Um, and new plates every week. 
Now, I can put things in the dishwasher, but if they don't come clean after twice, they get thrown away. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy to load the dishwasher. But, it, you know, it's it's stuff like that. And I, I, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I can't break myself to say... It's my. It should be I my know. burden. I, I know. I want to. I want to bear that burden. I want to be that pack mule yeah. behind you. But I think um, that's also part of how we were raised because absolutely. you know you were raised very much to be gentlemanly, yeah. which is a fantastic thing. Um, but at the same time, I was raised to be an independent woman, that's and so, funny. so it's you know we just and we've done pretty good. We at do well coming we do, yeah. to a middle ground yeah. there. I don't think either of us are fully comfortable no. with it, but we've come to a middle ground. We often so. do that furrowed brow yeah. look at each other like, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand you, but I'm going to accept this because yeah. you're a good lay. We both do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's funny, but it's still, it's a healthy, yeah. there's nothing bad about it. No. All right. Um, your last, or my, my fourth, second to last one, my fourth one. one. Yeah. yeah, what do you think it is? I think words of affirmation. It is words of affirmation, and I think yours is words of affirmation. I'm going to say you had four of those. You're no fun anymore. You're correct. <laughs> I'm uh, good with numbers. What can I say? I know, right? And I'm in trouble. Um, I'm going to say that you had three. Yes. Ha! <laughs> Jeez. Um, so I was four, you were three. Mm -hmm. I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, I like hearing I love you, but. I like hearing I love you and I like hearing, you know, you look nice and things like that. Or more specifically, because you look nice is kind of general. But if you say something specific. You look nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. But at the same time, that's not as important to me as when you just like grab me and like pash me you know yeah. to me that means a lot more look at you being so. all australian <laughs> pashed <laughs> I love that term. I do too. It's great. Yeah. Um, um, so to me, it's you know, it's it's nice to hear it, and and I think honestly, it it if it comes from a str uh, not a stranger but a friend, it means a little more. Yeah. If it comes from a stranger, it means less. Interesting. Because I think people think that everyone wants to hear how how nice that's they true. are, how whatever. Oh, that's a pretty outfit, or those are nice shoes, or whatever. And a friend is not genuinely gonna, generally going to tell you those things unless they actually mean it, whereas a stranger is just going to say it because they think it's what you want to hear. See, and I think I think that's funny because what I like to do, I'll, I'll say it to random people. I know you've seen me do this. Yeah. Random people on the street, especially with jewelry. I'm a jewelry guy. I see jewelry. I like it. Um, so I'll comment, like, oh, that's a pretty, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. You know, I like your necklace or I like your earrings or, and I'm very, you know, just out of the blue. And to, for me, I only say if I mean it, I'm not saying to try to hook up with somebody. Um, and I guess that's what I'm thinking is more, I'm thinking more in a, when I say that in a stranger kind of way, I'm thinking more like maybe not a bar setting, like but, a if, flirting with but you. if you're flirting with you, but yeah, yeah. because I mean, there've been people that I've passed in, I've, I work in a big building with tons of people that I don't know. And, and I've, randomly said to people as I pass them going through the entryway, if they're going in and I'm going out, I'll be like, oh, hey, I like your shoes. Yeah. If they really stand out and if it's something that yes. really is. But that's, in passing, that's clearly not a flirting type of thing. But if you're, mm. you know, somewhere where you're looking to maybe hook up or meet people, fair, then fair I enough. don't really take yeah. it seriously. Fair enough. Yeah. But some people really mean see, it. See, that's funny because don't, I, but, I, I don't know now. Now I yeah. wonder if I come off as genuine because when I say it, I do mean it. I'm not going to compliment you on your hair, your right. eyes, your, you know, whatever, if I don't actually think that you have something of quality. And what's, what could be interesting, too, is you may come off as genuine to someone where that is a higher language oh, That's a good question me. as well. To me, it's not a very important language, so I don't put a lot of stock into interesting. it. Interesting. But for somebody that that's one of their primary languages, they may... That may actually really mean a lot yeah. to them as opposed to me, you know? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So the last one for both of us is obviously gifts. Obviously. You're a one. You're a two. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Math. So, and I will say that I don't know the statistics on couples out there, but I'm going to think it's really rare that we're exactly the same order of them and pretty close on numbers. I know, right? So physical touch, let's do a recap. Physical touch, I'm 10, you're 12. Yeah. Quality time, I'm 9, you're 8. Acts of service, I'm 5, you're 6. Words of affirmation, I'm 4, you're 3. Receiving gifts, I'm 2, you're 1. Yeah. 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 So I think that's unusual that we're so close, really. Yeah. But it works for us. So Yeah, and it's funny, too, because my previous uh, mm -hmm. wife, I know that quality time was very important to her. 
physical touch was very important to her, but receiving gifts, I think, was also very important to her because... I think gifts were high on her list. I used to bring home stuff all the time. I was traveling all the time. I would bring home jewelry. I would bring home random things. And what's funny is I know when you and I started dating, I did that. And it was like, oh, thank you. And I still remember at one point I'd spent like an like early in our relationship, like very I was, early, like we're talking maybe a month in. Yeah, we'd hooked up a handful of times. We'd hooked up more than a handful of well, times. It was enough that I was like, "This girl's a keeper." Yeah. Um. So you need to buy her. But something. it wasn't very far. It in, wasn't though. put a ring on yeah. it yet, but it was no. getting close. Um. But I brought you a necklace home, mm-hmm. and you were like, "Oh, this is really pretty," and then sat it down and left the room. And I was like, "Wait." What? It's like, I spent like an hour and a half picking this out, and it was not an inexpensive piece of jewelry. No, it's gorgeous. I still wear it And you still wear it. Yeah, yeah, you do. But it's just kind of funny because I look at that now, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I wasn't speaking your language of love. Yeah. Um, So what about your your boyfriend in between? What was he? That's a good question. So um, he was a acts of service guy and a words of affirmation guy. Okay. So really kind of the inverse to me. He wasn't big on gifts, but he also wasn't big on physical touch and quality time was not even on the list, Which I don't think. Which probably didn't help if he didn't recognize that those were important to you. Yeah. Yeah. And and clearly I, I at the time I wasn't recognizing, you know. Yeah. But I remember definitely remember at one point I had overslept and for some reason he was coming to my hotel room. Um, and he knocked on the door and which woke me up and he ironed my shirt, ironed my pants I, yeah. while I showered. He was ironing everything right. to make sure it was ready. He had, you know, my underwear and my socks laid out for me. Um, and so that's sweet. And I look at that now, that was clearly an act of service. Right. And I, I looked back on it appreciatively, but I now know that I didn't appreciate it the Enough way that him. he expected yeah. me to appreciate yeah. it. Um, so which sort of leads to that. So. I was going to say, that's another thing, too, is that if you if you don't know what your partner's language is, look at what they do. Yeah. And because how they act and the things that they do towards you will often give you a clue as to what's important to them. Yeah. My first husband was always giving me gifts. And they were little things. He might, like, make something at work and bring it home or, like, give me a card or something. But it was all these little things that he was constantly giving me. Gifts were obviously high on his. Yeah. They were nothing to me. And I didn't even acknowledge that. I mean, you know, I'd be like, oh, thanks, whatever. And, again, set it aside. (laughs) But I didn't realize how important it was until things were basically over with us. And that was, towards the end was when I was like, Oh, this means something to him. And so I tried to start, but of course at that point it's too late. Yeah. Um, but look at what they do for you. Do they, you know, help you around the house? Do they fill up the car if they know you're going to take it? Do they do things like ironing your clothes for you if you're running late or if you're in a hurry? Um, you know, do they just want to spend time with you? Do they suggest that you do things together? Do they just enjoy, you know, sitting and holding each other? Is it yeah. the touch? or You know, and you don't have to actually respond with that language of love. You no. respond with the language that you're comfortable with right. as well. So if somebody folds the laundry or puts the laundry away, you recognize to them verbally, thank you for putting that laundry right. away. That was that I really appreciate that. Because you look at that and say, oh yeah, that's their language that yeah. they're trying to speak. You need to recognize that. And if you don't... And encourage it. Yeah, yeah. And encourage it. Because if you don't recognize it or encourage it, they feel like they've... It's the equivalent of holding your hand out to someone to shake it and the other person just ignoring yeah. it. You need to, you know, to, to acknowledge it. And one of the things, a direct quote from the book um, is, people tend to criticize their spouse most loudly in the area where they themselves have the deepest emotional need. And I think that's a really... Interesting. It's a very yeah. good quote because, you know, I look at where I criticized my ex-wife and it was where I had that that d- deep emotional emotional need. Yeah. And the same thing with my boyfriend in between her and you. Yeah. Was, you know, I that it was the same thing. Um so I've tried to make it a a bigger point now in understanding that um to recognize with the partners that I have or we have what you know, again, it's not only about love. It's the languages of love, but it's about relationships. It's right. about communicating with people. And I would say, too, when you're fighting with your partner, 
pay attention to what they're complaining about. Yeah. If they say, you know, I said this to you and you didn't even acknowledge it, or I did this for you and you you didn't even notice, or I gave you this, or... Or you forgot an anniversary, yeah, birthday, yeah, whatever. Any of those little things. Pay attention to what their main you concern never say. is. Right. You never say, yeah. you never show me, you never touch yeah. me. Yeah. You know, anything like that. And that will give you a very big clue as to as what's very important what to What do they need? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and like we said before, you can take this test online. It's a free test, yeah. which is the best kind of tests. Um, yeah. So take it, and then you can both sort of understand where each other are coming from. And, and you can have a nice, a wonderful discussion over, like, we just kind of went through, you know, which ones were our top ones and how important are they? And you yeah. can go through that with your partner and, and find specifics. If you don't know, you know, maybe, sure, it may be acts of service, but what things in particular do you like? What are yeah. you looking for? What means the most to you? Well, and it's funny, too, because if you'd asked me, if you'd showed me that list and said, rank it. Yeah. I, I would have definitely said physical touch is at my top, mm -hmm. but I don't think I would have realized that it's a third of how so I far. communicate. Yeah. You know, according to this book, I should say, or according right. to this, right. uh, this, test, yeah. this ethos, uh, the, the, the way I communicate is, is physical touch. Mm -hmm. But I also know in work, and you and I have constantly talked about this. If I shake a person's hand, my I, I'm a right-handed guy, but my right hand out to shake your hand, my left hand is going to be either on your forearm, your bicep, or your shoulder, yeah. depending on who yeah. you are. Um, because it's for me, that's a it's a connection and it's mm -hmm. an act of dominance. Mm -hmm. um, I know that that's how I can assert myself. Right. Um, I'm constantly in touch with coworkers, not sexual, not no. sexual touch. No. Um, but I'm constantly in touch with people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a, a good point as well to bring up work because of course it was a colleague of mine that gave me the book to first read it. And I was single at the time. So I didn't, you know, I could look back at my previous relationship and, and say that this is why, you know, the first one failed or I yeah. guess it was towards the end of it, but it was basically over. And so I could look at that and then kind of put myself in a better frame of mind for the next one and, and pay attention to other people as to what was important to them. But I used that at work a lot. As I looked at, at the time I had, I don't know, I was managing a group of people. And so I looked at everyone in my group and I, you know, looked for what was important to each one of them. And for some people, it was the the words of affirmation. Yeah. And so, you know, one girl, I would go, if she did something, I'd be like, hey, thanks for doing that. You know, really appreciate it. And that's all it took was just a simple acknowledgement of something that she had done. And she would go above and beyond to do something if she knew that it was appreciated. Right. For other people, it was a gift. And again, if I went on holiday, I brought them back a little something from where I went. It Chocolates can, or if yeah. you brought in muffins one morning or yeah. bagels. Bring in bagels or something. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are, are really Really good with that and other people it was a touch and so you like as you're praising them put a hand on their back yeah. or their shoulder or just you, you know you can do it in a non-sexual way yeah. in a in a non yeah be like hey you know i really appreciate or i really yeah. like the way you did this or this project turned out really well and just but have a hand on them while you're saying it and it means that bit more to them and so i you know i looked at everyone in my team and everyone around me and i you know tried to to evaluate which one I thought was their best or, you know, what was important to them and apply that in my daily interactions with them. And it went a long way. Yeah, it'll build a lot. It did. And I ended up with a team that would go above and beyond yeah. for me at the drop of a hat if I needed them to yeah. just by simple recognition of that. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Makes me wonder. I wonder if that's Donald Trump's problem. Maybe he's <laughs> a physical touch guy and he just doesn't do the back thing. He just does the like, oh, man, thanks so much for all your hard work. I'm just going to grab you by the pussy. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what do I know? Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, do you have any other things you want to say about the languages of love? No, just the, you know, again, like we said at the beginning, whether you, you know, if you read the book, if you listen to it, if just ignore the Christian undertones if you're not into that. If you are, it doesn't matter. But pay attention to the, the principles of it and, and think critically about not only what is important to you, what's important to your partner. If you have children, look at them and determine yeah. what's important to them. Um, or if they're very, very young, you know, what you do to them will shape how they... You can coach. We yeah, learn to love by they watching our, grow up the people and learn. around us. Yeah. Um, 
I'm going to say that you don't necessarily have to read the book. No. Um, you can read the Wikipedia page. <laughs> Um, and I think you'll get it's gain. actually pretty short. There are some other if you just Google it, you'll come yeah, up with a lot of there's stuff. There's some good yeah. stuff out there. And the the test itself, I think, is the, the it, when you take the test, they even give you sort of a breakdown of what each one then means to yeah. you. Um and it's it's you know, pretty extensive. I, I was looking at mine, you know earlier. It's like, you know, physical touch. This language isn't all about the bedroom, which, you know, it's it's pretty commonsensical kind of things. Um, but, but I don't think you necessarily... there's always a little nugget or two in there. Yeah, the, you know? the, yeah. The, book, the book is a good a good source, yeah. but I don't think you have to... Yeah, but it's, it's a good talking point between you and your partner um, to kind of figure out where you stand because we have, I would say, it, it is unusual, at least in our circle, that we're both the same because many of our couple friends, one is one way, one's another way. Yeah. And if they can recognize that and work with it, then it's a lot better yeah. for them. Um, but you can also apply it in many, many other areas of life. So it's a good talking point for you and your partner. It's also a good area, a good way to start looking at your relationships outside of that as well. And even your, your relationship as a couple with other couples too. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. And it doesn't, and this is something that transcends, uh, sexuality and sex. Yeah. Um, because it is, it doesn't matter who you're talking to. Everybody expresses themselves. In, in, and feels appreciated. And in feels appreciated, ways. really, in yeah. one of these five ways. Yeah. And I don't. I think it's pretty exhaustive the the five different ways. But I, I yeah, I do like it. Um, yeah. It gets it gets my seal of approval. Excellent. <laughs> Um, all right. Do we have a uh, question for the? So we have podcast? a question from a listener um, that is rather appropriate for this. Um, but it's, have you ever changed anything significant for your partner, either about yourself or your behavior? Um, God, this is embarrassing. Not really. I mean, at one point I had a goatee, like a real full, like... I cannot even picture that. There's pictures on Facebook. Uh, I had a full goatee, like it was bushy and full. Full. Wow. Yeah. And my wife at the time um, was like, I hate that thing. Will you please take that off? Mm-hmm. And part of me was like, no. But then I was like, but I might get laid. So, yes. <laughs> so I shaved it. Um, and then for the longest time, I had a very close cropped. Okay. I mean, it was about what it is now, but yeah. I would shave everything around it. And I'd keep, I'd keep the goatee at about a, I don't know. Less than one millimeter long. It was just a shadow of a goatee. So a little more than a five o'clock shadow. A little more than a five o'clock shadow, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it was... I look back at it now, and I was like, oh, that was evil, Mr. Adam. <laughs> um, it was horrific. Um, occasionally now when I shave, I'll still shave the goatee, mm-hmm. and I'll look at it, because I'm trying to convince myself that I should have facial hair. Right. Um, I continually don't. convince myself that I don't need facial yeah. hair, that it's... That no, because I, I can't grow a proper beard. But yeah. anyway, um, what about behavior wise? I don't think I have. I mean, I mean, sort of. I was closeted for <laughs> thirty two <laughs> fucking years, um, but I was still seeing men on the side. You know, it's funny because I was. I've always been myself in air quotes, mm-hmm. but. Most people just looked at me and went, oh, he's metrosexual or he's, you know, he's really in touch with his feminine side and shit like that. And in actuality, I was, you know, I was hiding myself, yes, but I was still able to be myself. So Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to live in a time where guys could like to dress nicely and and look clean and and smell good and have nice interior design and go to musical theater and people still somehow thought we were all straight um (laughs) i'm not saying that if you like all those things that you're definitely not straight um but for me it wasn't that case right um so yeah i mean i don't feel like i changed myself but at the same time i necessarily wasn't myself right but yeah never again um, I've had many arguments with partners, sexual partners that I'm like, I don't agree with you. I think what you think is stupid. And I don't always talk to all those partners <laughs> anymore. <laughs> How about you? Uh, so 
physically, I cannot, I don't think there's anything really that I've changed about myself for a partner. Um, I'm trying to think back even a long time ago. Is there anything physically? But I will say that one thing that I did do, and this is fairly minor, um, but my first husband didn't like tights and things like that as much because he thought they looked slutty. But with winter skirts, I think tights are awesome because it gives you, like socks for guys, it gives you a chance to have that individualism. Tights are slutty? What the? I need to talk to him. He's a wonderful guy. He's a, I do really like him. He's a great guy. And we really want him to come down and yes. visit us in Australia. I sort of think we should ping him this this, maybe, this maybe. podcast and then be like, <laughs> dude, what the hell is wrong with you? Tights yeah. are fucking hot. But like the patterned ones and stuff. And who knows? I mean, this was ages ago. Maybe he feels different now. But at the time, we I were... I sort of want a messaging. We were in, I was going to say, we were in college. And, and, and yeah, like... Way back thought, when. Yeah, way back when. But he thought that, you know, they they were kind of slutty. And so, yeah, we just... So I, I didn't really wear tights very okay. much with them. Like, I'd wear pantyhose. Pantyhose are not tights. Like the patterned ones and well, stuff. Well, Grandma wears pantyhose. Yes, right. But apparently, slutty Grandma <laughs> wears tights. <laughs> But I like tights and patterned ones in the winter time. They go well with the winter skirts, and they keep your legs warm. So a, it's good. A, a granny wears tights. <laughs> I'm sorry. A granny wears pantyhose. A gilf wears tights. <laughs> if you don't know what a gilf there is, you go. I'm not going to tell you. Right. Figure it out. So I mean, again, it was nothing major, but there were some little things like that that you know, if he thought it was slutty, it was like, okay, well, I'm not going to wear it, even though apparently I'm kind of slutty. But whatever. Um, <laughs> You're not a slut. You just love love. <laughs> well, there's that. Um, but again, nothing major. And then behaviorally, you're going to laugh at this one. Um, but I am, um, most people that know me, I'm not a, not really a girly girl. <laughs> and I, I mean, it's I made the comment recently that I'm much more comfortable on a racetrack than I am in a room full of women. Yes, you did. And so there was a point also way back. Oh, my God. It was like very beginning of college, late high school, we were just dating, he and I were. Um, and I thought that I was supposed to be a girly girl because that's what boys like, right? They like girly girls. I like where this is going. So we were watching a horror movie. <laughs> and rather than being fascinated and loving it like I normally do, I tried to pretend that I was scared and I and I didn't like it. Oh, and my God. That he needed to comfort me. Yeah, that went over well. <laughs> oh, my God. And that's... I was like... Fuck this! This isn't right. I, this is not who I am. I can't do this. I can't even pretend to do this. <laughs> Wait, had you guys had sex yet? Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so he thought he. Oh, oh we were we were pretty serious at that point, but it was still just. I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm going to do. And then I tried it, and I was like, I, I can't even pretend at this. I I can't, and so I didn't anymore. Oh, that's so. But there funny. was the one time that I, I can did. sort of see you playing scared. I can't even tell you the movie. What movie was it? Hellraiser. Oh, the original? Yeah. Dude, that shows a naked man's wang. There's wang in that movie. Yeah. Leave it to me to know where wang is. <laughs> but trust me, there's wang in that movie. But it, he's, it, he's skinless. I yeah, mean, right. Skinless wang, but right. there's still wang. So yeah, rather than being like, I mean, I was actually secretly fascinated, but I, I was trying to pretend that I wasn't. And oh my God. That didn't go I, I need to talk to him now. <laughs> I, I, I feel... I feel a Skype session coming on. I just after right, all of, right. after the tights yeah. and the Hellraiser <laughs> and the skinless Wang, I, right. I feel like I need to talk to him yeah. and yeah. we need to have a moment. But but again, those were I think I was just kind of testing the water, like especially with that one. And I, yeah. and after the one movie, I was like, I can't do this, and it was just gone. But it was. Did you one watch of, something like truly scary, like uh, Steel Magnolia? Steel Magnolias. <laughs> I mean, because that <laughs> that movie terrifies me. Yep. No, we didn't. The level. Of um, in that movie. <laughs> no, but it was so there. It, there's that, but again, there's nothing that I did sustained because I'm. When we've t already had this conversation about me being raised as an independent woman, and and I just it was one of those that this is who I am. It's it, it just is. You either accept it or you don't, and if you don't, then piss off. <laughs> I love it. That's just great. Um, <sighs> so you never yeah. like changed your hair or anything to try to impress somebody. No. Do you think your family, your parents did? Did what? Change themselves in order to impress a, uh, yes. a partner? 
Um, I don't know about a partner, but I would say outside people, yes, very mm. much so. Interesting. Yeah. People in the community and people that they associated with regularly, for sure I would say that, that they tried to physically um, make themselves more appealing to those people around them. Interesting. But not to each other, I wouldn't say. Or at least not that I ever saw. Yeah. I never saw a lot of um, romanticism between my parents. Like the intricacies of yeah. their love. No. Yeah. You know, I look at my parents, and I don't... My mom is not somebody who changes herself for mm-hmm. anybody. She's very much a fuck you, if you don't like mm-hmm. me, piss off kind of girl. Um, but she does show more touch towards your father than she's otherwise comfortable with. Absolutely, she does. Yeah. yeah they're... They now... I mean, again, they've been married for 40... Coming up on 43 years. I think they're past that, but yeah. 44 years. It's 43 or 44. Um, but they... Yeah... They're constantly holding hands. It's really mm-hmm. sweet to watch my parents. Yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah. I can see us being there in a million years. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let's uh, wrap this up. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So thank you once again for tuning in this week. If you'd like to contact us, please reach out to us at our Instagram, our Twitter or our uh, Facebook page. We are at By the By Podcast. We have an email address, theatomsoflove at gmail.com. We love, love, love getting your emails and hearing about all the naughty things that you're doing uh, in conjunction with all the naughty things that we're doing. If you want to support us, you can do that a few ways. One, that helps you. You can go to adamandeve.com and use the uh, the key code by the by b y t h e b i. There you will get free shipping. You'll get a free bunches of free prizes along with your your order. You'll get uh, video on demand movies. I think there's six of them, and you'll get fifty percent off one of the items in your basket. So if you want to order multiple things, you can do that. You just use by the by each time, and every item you'll get up to fifty percent off on. So that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if you're interested in geeky things, you can go to geekysextoys.com and, again, use the coupon code by the by B-Y-T-H-E-B-I, and you'll get 5% off of that. They have some really exciting things. Yes. A few of which we gave away at Desire. It's so cool. Yeah. So excited. So excited. Uh, yeah. So um, send us your stuff. Give us your love. If you want to support us directly and want to get your own grubby little hands on some of our cum rags, please support us at patreon.com slash by the by podcast. Uh, you can see some of the giveaways we've got there, even up to uh, a conversation with us over Skype. We'll, we do that on a quarterly basis with some, some folks. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us this week. Yeah, see you next week. <laughs>